and it is a pleasure for me and an honor to introduce uh, Roberto Orecro from the IEO. He will be delivering a lecture on uh, trial design. Professor Orecchia, thank you for being with us this afternoon. I'll give you the floor. Hi, thank you. I am very grateful for uh, this opportunity. Good afternoon from Milano to all the participants. Okay. And uh, I, I, I try to share the, the screen. Okay. I hope to do. Okay, good. <clears throat> so uh, I, I would like to discuss uh, <clears throat> some aspect about uh, trial design in prostate cancer starting from the current situation, some uh, ongoing uh, trial. Uh, try to explain why there is a still a lack of evidence in favor of uh, carbon ion with respect to photon, what we need uh, for future clinical trials, and a uh, special part with the role of uh, new omic science like radiomic, doseomic, and uh, <coughs> radiogenomics uh, and artificial intelligence. I have no conflict of uh, interest to declare. I would like to start with uh, some statement about the treatment of prostate cancer already presented, but anyway, just to summarize that the treatment of uh, prostate cancer is usually based on a clinical stage with uh, local treatment only for early disease. Intermediate high risk cancer are usually treated uh, with the combined approach uh, with uh, um, uh, androgen deprivation therapy. Radiotherapy has become and is a major therapeutic option with different techniques uh, by external beam irradiation like EMRT and other or brachytherapy. We know from uh, clinical trials that high dose radiation improve uh, biochemical control and uh, biochemical free, free recurrent survival. Higher dose, 70, 80 grade, combined with uh, androgen deprivation, improve uh, survival in a high risk and intermediate risk, but also increase the toxicity, moving from 70 to 80 grade or more. We know also that hypofractionation or radiation is not inferior to conventional fractionation radiation therapy. And uh, we need, it is crucial, for prostate cancer <clears throat> to balance uh, between tumor control and uh, toxicity response. We move uh, to clinical result, just to give you a summer, summary about uh, some uh, clinical outcomes of high dose radiation therapy. <clears throat> you can see very high disease uh, control, acceptable toxicity, but still high. And also in selected series treated by stereotactic irradiation, radiosurgery, very high dose per fraction with a limited number of fraction, very high, again, uh, local control and biochemical control and acceptable, again, uh, late toxicity. We have also different uh, series from uh, particle therapy more with uh, proton therapy, <clears throat> which uh, the results are very high with a lower toxicity. The same mainly from Japan in the use of carbon ion therapy, different fractionation, typical Japanese fractionation with a reduced number of fraction, currently about uh, 12 fraction for a full cycle of uh, carbon ion therapy. Again, uh, very good uh, local control and very, very low uh, late uh, toxicity, severe late toxicity. It is uh, interesting to see this uh, quite recent uh, meta-analysis about the clinical efficacy of proton therapy and uh, carbon ion therapy. You can see uh, the overall survival rate for proton and the overall survival rate for carbon ion. All the study that are, uh, we have uh, 20 trials uh, for proton therapy and uh, 13 trials uh, for carbon ion. The result uh, in terms uh, of uh, uh, outcome, clinical outcome are very homogeneous. 
but uh, it's impossible because the to compare this study because uh, the majority of these clinical trials are without a control group and the comparison between uh, this data has been made with a meta analysis of photon therapy the meta analysis of uh, cow published some years ago this is a summary of finding of uh, this uh, meta analysis you can see as i said a very high overall survival and also biochemical relapse free survival for uh, both for carbon ion and uh, proton therapy so there are no statistical difference between uh, different particle uses also the same in terms uh, of uh, a great great uh, two or more uh, gastrointestinal or genitourinary toxicity between uh, CRT and uh, uh, proton therapy uh, uh, treatment uh, I reported also some uh, results about uh, different uh, schedules of uh, fractionation using uh, radiation therapy, and this confirmed by this uh, uh, meta-analysis that uh, good uh, local control, the same, uh, changing the schedules of fractionation, and also very similar rate uh, of uh, toxicity. What is uh, really um, important uh, and, and very difficult to understand that the quality of this type of analysis is considered very low and uh, <clears throat> if we look uh, in the ongoing trial it's uh, not probable to expect uh, some uh, uh, finding that can ameliorate uh, this uh, lack of evidence Looking in the clinical trial GOV, uh, we can find uh, some study, ongoing trial from China, from the center of carbon ion in Shanghai. One is uh, to explore the optimal dose of 12 fraction of CIRT uh, because uh, there are some difference in equipment and carbon ion, uh, TPS, used between Japan and uh, our center. And this phase one study explore only the optimal dose of 12 fraction of uh, carbon ion therapy. The second one is uh, to uh, consider the feasibility and safety in a dose escalation uh, study, again uh, in the center in Shanghai. And uh, the goal, the end point is to uh, find uh, the maximum tolerated dose that is, mm, can be used uh, uh, in a second phase two, uh, second part uh, of uh, this trial. More interesting from Shanghai is uh, this uh, study that uh, considered the possibility to different dose of level, the dose uh, standard dose in four weeks in the <clears throat> arm A, and an escalation using a technique for the simultaneous uh, integrated boost uh, giving a total dose of 72 gray equivalent uh, in uh, uh, 60, uh, 16 uh, fraction. And also what is important, uh, based on uh, guidelines, uh, to determine the target boost area with uh, high quality imaging, like uh, uh, multiparametric uh, multi MRI, and uh, together with uh, uh, PSMA uh, PET uh, CT scan. Uh, in uh, Italy, uh, a cooperative study in which we try with, between CNAO, IEO, and the uh, National Institute of Cancer in Milano is a phase two open, quite uh, innovative, uh, new concept. So the concept to use a sort of a mixed beam between uh, carbon ion and uh, X-ray gold standard that is MRT uh, treatment. Uh, the anticipated boost uh, means uh, to give uh, a short courses of uh, <coughs> carbon ion, only four fraction for a total of 16.6 uh, .6 gray that are equivalent uh, to 28 gray in 14 fra fractions uh, given by external beam uh, irradiation and uh, to evaluate uh, the possibility using this anticipated boost uh, to overcome 
the radio resistant of uh, high risk uh, uh, prostate cancer. We have results only in terms of uh, acute and intermediate toxicity. That means uh, that the protocol is feasible, but we have to wait uh, in order to assess uh, the effectiveness uh, of uh, this uh, combined uh, treatment. CIRT uh, carbon ion uh, uh, is superior to photon. This is a really a key question after so long time in using carbon ion, so long time using high uh, technology radiation therapy. But from the current uh, and the ongoing study will be very difficult uh, to assess uh, this clinical superiority. And uh, there are many reasons that can uh, justify this uh, persistent lack uh, of uh, uh, evidence. One uh, reason is because uh, in different countries, in different institutions, there are a lot of different methods uh, in order to select patient for all the tumor, but also for prostate uh, cancer. <clears throat> the second uh, reason is uh, due to the not appropriate, not always appropriate design of uh, a clinical trial. We have to consider eligibility that usually is based more on uh, uh, patient and uh, disease criteria, not uh, on biomarkers or uh, biological data. <clears throat> and the randomization usually is testing the effect of those distribution, so physics, not clinic, and very few the effect of radiation quality. What we expect from this very traditional design is if, uh, if, we if we give the same dose to the tumor, we can explore at the maximum different toxicity. But uh, if we maintain as uh, endpoint uh, different tumor dose, we have to start from the same level of uh, toxicity. Another point that we have to consider that is very difficult to compare series, any type of series of clinical series, <laughs> using different models to calculate uh, RBA. I believe that Piero Fossati has already explained uh, this uh, important point, but I would like to mention this uh, paper from Heidelberg in which uh, the result uh, in uh, this study, which compare proton therapy and carbon ion in prostate cancer, uh, was uh, observed and expected a very low level of response uh, in for carbon ions with respect to the common data from the literature. And this is due to an error in the equivalence uh, using different model, Japanese model, that is not equivalent to LEM1 and LEM4 model used in uh, uh, Europe. So means that the dose given in Heidelberg uh, with uh, carbon ion is strongly underestimated. It is clinical relevant uh, this point. Another point is that uh, the great majority of the already published uh, study usually uh, uh, employed uh, passive scanning scattering beams. But now the current uh, technology, the today technology is uh, moving, has moved to the active scanning beam. And uh, we know that there is important uh, uh, difference in terms uh, of uh, DOH, not the coverage of the PTV, not uh, for other uh, issues, but this important reduction using active scanning beam in, for the rectal, for the rectum and for the bladder. So it means that uh, we have an improvement uh, in uh, uh, those uh, distribution. Another important uh, issue and challenges is uh, the possibility to verify the quality of uh, our treatment with uh, carbon ion and uh, is not the current uh, standard in a clinical setting, but there are some uh, interesting uh, perspectives uh, in using uh, PET, PET scanning, in-beam PET, in order to evaluate uh, uh, 
the dose oh, distribution in sure. real time. It is another paper about the auto activation path uh, for the visualization of uh, range uh, beam in uh, uh, carbon ion. Uh, this is maybe a good uh, uh, improvement in future for the quality of, uh, of, uh, of the trial. Uh, what we need today in order to translate uh, what, what type of new data we have to translate uh, in clinical trial to create uh, the still lacking uh, evidence in favor of uh, carbon iron or more in general in particle therapy. We have to move from uh, clinical driven trials to biologically driven trials. And the selection of patient and trial design should be based mainly on radiobiology with a clear stratification of uh, patient according the expression of uh, different molecular biomarkers as uh, to test the radio resistant, uh, to identify hypoxic area, to identify intratumoral heterogeneities, especially due to the different cell line resistant present in the cancer stem cell niche, and also some changes in uh, micro environment. This testing this treatment combination in trials uh, necessary to determine the most uh, beneficial treatment. So you can see here that we have uh, to put uh, into the trial the data coming from translational research, especially from immunomics, uh, proteomics, transitomics, and uh, other omic uh, science. There is also reported in the literature uh, interesting uh, review of uh, in vitro study that justify the uh, possibility of uh, a more efficient treatment uh, with uh, carbon ion. This is due in this uh, analysis of uh, 12 different reports uh, published that uh, we have uh, higher RBA, especially for carbon ion, of course, we have uh, reduced survival fraction at the standard dose with respect to proton and photon. We have less uh, influence of epoxic area. We have also the possibility to use uh, some uh, sensitizing agent, etc. and uh, etc. Another point uh, of interest uh, in using uh, carbon ion, especially in uh, case of extended field as uh, required for the treatment of high risk, uh, the wool pelvis uh, treatment is uh, uh, the negligible damage to uh, peripheral lymph node uh, produced by uh, carbon ions. You can see data on that, in which uh, the lymph lymphocyte counts is at the end of the treatment is absolutely better with respect to proton, with respect to 3D conformer and to respect to uh, EMRT. And uh, also we have a sort of uh, immunogenicity induced by uh, carbon ion therapy. It's also depending from uh, the level of those. I dose more release of uh, antigens stimulating an immunological response. For this reason, it's very uh, interesting to explore in the next clinical trial, possible combination that are already uh, used in uh, radiation therapy, the combination between uh, ions and uh, immunotherapy. And uh, we have uh, many uh, trial on, uh, on, on prostate cancer, also uh, not uh, specially for prostate cancer, but uh, mainly in no small <coughs> cell lung cancer, uh, but uh, probably prostate may be also uh, uh, an indication for a FART study. Also consider that uh, ions can be synergic with uh, many type of uh, immunotherapy, uh, conjugate antibodies, immuno checkpoint inhibitor, and also dendritic cell vaccination. An example of a new approach uh, uh, may be 
uh, this uh, <coughs> protocol that has started uh, in, uh, in now, and probably colleagues from now will speak on that, is the iconic uh, study with the use uh, with the first uh, one of the first study uh, non randomized at the moment a phase two trial that assess the feasibility and the activity of addition of carbon ion therapy to immune in checkpoint inhibitor in cancer patient with a stable disease after pembrolizumab primary endpoint and uh, Iconic should be or could be the first proof of concept of feasibility and clinical activity of the addition of carbon ion to immune checkpoint inhibitors in oncology. You can see here the design of this study, advanced disease, melanoma, no small lung cancer, urotelial uh, carcinoma, immunotherapy first line, pembrolizumab stable disease, carbon ion therapy, again, immunotherapy at the progression. Another issue uh, in which there are uh, study is, uh, is uh, the carbon ions uh, combined uh, with uh, target therapy. And uh, you can see the target, you can see the small molecule inhibitor, and those, and uh, at the moment, uh, we have only preclinical study on the use of uh, particle therapy, but this uh, preliminary study can be transferred, can be translated uh, in the future in uh, clinical trials. So I repeat that we need this innovation in design a clinical trial. Another issue is uh, the genomic classifier in personalized cancer radiation therapy approach. That is a really a promising tool to improve risk stratification. Clinics is not enough in order to have a proper risk stratification because we have a lot of heterogeneity in a clinical aspect of the disease. And you can see here in prostate cancer, a lot of ongoing trial registered on clinical trial government that uh, are randomized as, again in terms uh, of uh, uh, use of uh, different, all the study are in prostate cancer and all are applying uh, different uh, genomic uh, classifiers. What in the future, in order to integrate uh, classic uh, omic science means uh, genomic, transcriptomics, proteomic, et cetera, with uh, new omics sciences uh, from uh, imaging. That means uh, to uh, increase the use of uh, radio, <coughs> radiomics analysis, dosiomics, radiogenomics, and uh, today is more possible that in the recent past uh, due to the use of uh, artificial intelligence in order to analyze uh, or this uh, very huge amount uh, of data given by images because uh, images are more than picture there are data and we can uh, create uh, a lot of uh, radiomic feature with uh, tumor intensity tumor shape but also more complex high level radiomic feature like the texture, the wavelength, and in order to create this heat map that is very similar to gene expression maps and that can describe in a non-invasively way the whole complexity of the tissue structure. Just an example of we can integrate in our imaging, for example, in order to determine risk population, to assist uh, biopsy MRI guided, uh, to assist uh, diagnosis and patient management with uh, uh, machine learning and other high level application of uh, artificial intelligence. You can see here some uh, data already existing in uh, the literature about, uh, for example, of uh, <coughs> the prediction of uh, tumor hypoxia based on MRI derived uh, radiomics uh, data that's been tested and uh, some uh, uh, radiomic feature 
included high level textural and wave late transformed feature for uh, are being already identified and the model including also the clinical data is uh, uh, predictive very strong predictivity in terms uh, of identifying for uh, epoxic area inside uh, of uh, the target just a slide uh, two slides about dosiomic what is uh, dosiomic it is a sort of a new entry in uh, in the field of uh, uh, Omic science from images. And dosiomic can be defined as the extraction of features from the patient 3D radiation dose distribution is able to obtain specific spatial and statistical information. Uh, we can parameterize the dose distribution, in particular in region of interest by intensity, textural, and shape-based feature. And this allow a high complex uh, a level complexity a level of description that uh, is different uh, from those that can be obtained from uh, those volume histogram and what is important is the possibility to integrate the doxiomic uh, data with the, our dvh in order to create a sort of advanced tool to evaluate uh, RT plan quality and also able to identify a new metric to evaluate the quality of our uh, plan. And also is important to integrate and to introduce the dosiomic feature into the current model of TCP, tumor control probability, and then TCP uh, model, so normal tissue complication probability, that can help to overcome some current limitation of uh, this uh, uh, model. An example of uh, uh, dosiomic analysis uh, already published very recently in the literature. One is the correlation between the planet dose distribution and the biochemical failure, and has been a, a significant correlation with the biochemical failure in low A grade prostate cancer uh, with the data extracted uh, by the CTV. And the other one is the prediction of uh, radiation induced toxicity, especially for rectal toxicity. And again, pretreatment uh, uh, CT radiomic feature can improve uh, the performance of the prediction. And this is also this is important in order to select the patient uh, to move from standard uh, radiation therapy to the use of uh, uh, particles. <clears throat> Just uh, one word about uh, radiomics, the pipeline between radiomics means the association between uh, radiomics uh, uh, extracted from uh, uh, radiomic feature and uh, radio and profile, genomic profile, in order to create a radiogenomic uh, profile that can be used in all the phase uh, of uh, the clinical path uh, of uh, the patient, uh, predictive test, uh, prognostic test, uh, clinical decision making, risk stratification, and also treatment selection. As I said, radiogenomics is uh, useful also to analyze the individual genetic variation that affect the response of normal tissue to radiation, that means prediction of uh, radiotoxicity. We know that uh, the problem is due to the adverse reaction in normal tissue after radiation limit the dose to the tumor cell. The challenge is to identify individual threats that allow prediction of the increased risk of developing radiotoxicity. We have to remember that 80% of the variation in clinical response are due to the patient-related factors. Identifying germline variation and somatic epigenetic factors modulated the response and establish a gene-based uh, test uh, uh, for normal tissue radiosensitivity. So to move uh, to analyze and to find an uh, individual response uh, to, uh, uh, to the treatment, both for conventional irradiation and both for particle therapy irradiation. 
There are uh, some studies that are uh, using uh, uh, radiomics and uh, radiogenomics, uh, just to, we have no time to discuss all that, but you can publish it in a different uh, overview. And you can see also uh, using MRI as a base uh, to um, create a feature and uh, uh, it's combined uh, with the stud of uh, different type uh, of uh, uh, molecule. Uh, exosome DNA, ptan, uh, RNA expression, et cetera, et cetera. Just to close uh, my talk, just to summarize the need for well-designed clinical trials. Uh, we have a better, of course, uh, in carbon ion therapy, we have a better dose distribution, higher LT and RBE but they are expected to be powerful in a clinical sector, clinical setting, but direct evidence of uh, superiority of CIRT uh, is not still confirmed, as I said before. Cost effectiveness uh, remain a challenge. Patient preference uh, is an obstacle to conduct large scale uh, randomized clinical trial. And uh, we have also to change uh, some endpoint because over survival, disease free survival. So the conventional endpoints are not probably the more suitable endpoint. In the current situation and in the next future, uh, we have to incorporate radiomics, dosiomic, and radiogenomics data into the decision matching process and also to validate other specific biomarkers or biosignature for radiosensitivity. The special issue is immunotherapy with a possible role of carbon ion as demonstrated by many preclinical studies of increased immunogenicity. And what is important to realize a real precision radiation therapy is the integration of imaging, dosimetry, and molecular data. This is the goal to offer our patient uh, the best uh, uh, treatment uh, according to the stage of the disease, but also to the specific biological and molecular characteristic uh, of, of the, the tumor with proton, uh, with uh, carbon ion, with other special technique, including uh, the issue of uh, focal radiation therapy and uh, the a concomitant boost uh, on the dominant uh, intraprostatic lesion, very sophisticated technique. For the future, once uh, we have established uh, the current standard, we have to work a lot for that, but the future is based on uh, new concept, dynamic delivery in uh, carbon ion and uh, in proton with the uh, spot scanning hadron arc uh, with the use of combination of uh, multi-ion strategy. So we probably, we have to change our concept and consider carbon ion exactly as a new drug. And so to translate in our clinical trial, not the traditional concept of radiation therapy, but to introduce the concept, uh, use it now, basket trial, others, et cetera, for experiments on new drugs. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Orecchia, for that uh, uh, really inspiring and up-to-date lecture on uh, clinical trials, very interesting and detailed indeed. Um, uh, do we have any questions? I'm not seeing any questions on the Google uh, sheet uh, and no hands raised. Um, okay. I, I have a, oh yes, yes, Jota. Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much for this uh, very nice uh, presentation. As you can see in the chat, it was greatly appreciated. Uh, I take the opportunity, excuse my naive uh, uh, question. I'm not uh, a doctor to start with and uh, I'm trying to uh, handle the logistics of uh, the school as well. Maybe you have said it and I missed it. Um, I understand that uh, with these clinical trials, uh, it's always a comparison of uh, the benefit uh, of uh, carbon ion therapy versus uh, proton or photon. 
Uh, how is uh, the harm, let's say, to the healthy tissues uh, integrated in this uh, or uh, looked up? Uh, it's not very clear to me because um, uh, from what I have understood, uh, it's not just the difference in the tumor, it's what you spare that is also important. Yeah, yeah, You're, you, are, you are perfectly right. So at the moment, uh, if you look in the design of current linear trial, but also I, I, I show uh, some uh, ongoing clinical trial, what we are comparing is uh, the same level of dose or the equivalent, supposed equivalent uh, uh, level of dose. <clears throat> and what we expect uh, is uh, if we have the same dose given to the target, the tumor, et cetera, what we expect is, is is the same uh, TCP, the same tumor control probability, same dose, same effect. Okay, uh, maybe difference in terms of uh, complication, but it's very difficult to organize uh, randomized clinical trials. So it means that we have changed other endpoint, that we have some surrogate endpoint. And uh, to identify not the whole population of prostate cancer, might be lung cancer, et cetera, but to identify and to compare result between different uh, stratification of patient means, okay, I select only hypoxic tumor and I compare carbon less influenced by the hypoxic area with X-ray. Also in terms of preclinical and clinical study. This is the only way to overcome this gap. If uh, we don't uh, overcome, we have, uh, I, I, I discussed at this point, uh, I have a long life in carbon ion, so it's uh, more than 20, 25 years. Uh, so uh, uh, is the same uh, uh, discussion today is, uh, has been already made uh, 15 years ago. So which is the best, what is the best tumor for selecting? So in insolvent, we have to move absolutely to demonstrate that in different, in some selected patients or so selection, of proper selection, proper selection means biology and molecular characteristic of uh, not of the patient, of the disease end of the patient. If we are able to select this patient, we can demonstrate a real superiority of carbon ion. So means to change a traditional, if we put all together, one protocol fit for all, we have to move to uh, uh, the protocol that fit for one, for the individual. Not easy, okay. absolutely yeah. not, easy. not easy to do. Um, I have another question, Professor, for you. Uh, you mentioned at one point that, uh, um, if I understood you correctly, uh, if we do not have enough clinical trials because we do not have um, um, either enough candidates or because we don't have randomized trials, that we consider biological trials. Did I understand you cor correctly? Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how acceptable would that be by the insurance companies in practice? Ah, insurance companies is 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 a is a, is a real is a real problem, of course. Uh, if uh, if uh, so, means additional expenses. So it should be clear because uh, um, insurance companies uh, are, are quite worried about uh, additional costs for for treatment in oncology. Of course, carbon iron is one of the most expensive. In absolute terms, no, because uh, the cost of uh, new drugs uh, is much, much higher with respect to the more expensive technique uh, in uh, radiation therapy. In spite of this, there is a lot of uh, uh, constraint in using uh, radiation with respect to the use of drug, also the, re the reimbursement of this type of therapy. So um, we have... I repeat, so we, we, we have to, to move to a create a sort of a biological passport for, for the patient candidate to CRT and, uh, and other. Biological uh, passport means 
to create some profiles, that means omic profile of this patient, including new uh, uh, omic, uh, omics uh, like from radiomics, MRI, PET scan, etc. So we have to create a sort of avatar of the patient that is quite expensive. I agree on that. But if we uh, save, if we spare money from not appropriate indication, but we are able to select the proper patient for carbon ion based on more, less clinical data and more biological data, at the end, we save, we save money because we get more results and the patient who fail is an additional cost. If we reduce the failure, if we reduce, as already happened, the toxicity, we save money for our uh, national or European health system or everywhere. So I believe that uh, this can be also accepted by insurance. So you know that we have a lot of different rules. For example, in Italy, uh, in spite of the new uh, uh, nomenclature, the new uh, indication, the accepted indication by the reimbursement of our national health system, we cannot treat prostate. We cannot treat lung. We cannot treat breast. We cannot treat uh, a lot of things. Only some rare tumor. That means that we are not able to produce enough evidence that the expenses for CIRT, but also for proton is the same, is uh, it justify the excess of cost with respect uh, to the standard, the current standard treatment. This is, is a real issue. It is, so, of course, an obstacle in, uh, in, uh, in introducing and in increasing uh, substantially. You consider that we have today less than 1% of the patient who receive radiation therapy is receiving particles, less than 1%. Um, professor, over the past eight years, if one were to analyze the number of particle therapy machines, uh, about 10 years ago, there were very few proton therapy machines, but over the past decade or even less than that, um, uh, proton therapy machines have mushroomed in, in Europe. Um, yeah. Now we, we have close to 25 or 30, in fact, and many are planned and it's commercialized. So you can just go to a catalog and just buy one. Um, why do you think that happened in the past eight years? Were there clinical trials that clearly showed um, that proton therapy was... Uh, effective in certain cases, like pediatric cases or pregnant women and so forth. Um, uh, and, and do you think that the same might happen to carbon therapy if uh, we go down this different route that you're mentioning? Carbon therapy, uh, proton therapy, the, the market has changed. It has changed mainly due to the fact that it has been... Uh, presented on the market, the single room facility. So it uh, means that uh, it is much easier to uh, uh, integrate in already existing radiation therapy departments. So it means uh, that if you have uh, 10 Linux, if you had uh, a proton therapy uh, room, okay, you have 11, 11 different uh, Linux, and you can select internally, base it on uh, your criteria of the of the of the institution which patient moved to particle and which patient the majority of course remain in in single room also require less money to be invested uh, 20 20 25 million so instead of uh, 150 that's what the cost of, of, of a center carbon ion remain uh, remain uh, high expensive of course and uh, and there is also problem of uh, of shape and size of of, uh, of uh, you consider that uh, uh, for example again uh, we have some additional cost i i, I am probably you know one of the founder of knau so 
I, I know the history from 94 when we tried with Dupamaldi uh, and the end uh, with, the, with the success uh, to, to create a canal. Uh, uh, so I am the, the only person that don't need to convince about, <laughs> about the, the utility of, uh, of, of carbon ion and protons. So, but but uh, uh, the problem is, is that uh, today, to find a public institution or private institution that invest, like in Medostro, uh, uh, the, the 200 uh, millions of euro to install a carbon ion facility is not, uh, is not uh, easy. So we can say for the first time, there is one project that is under realization in the United States. This may open in the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. There is a uh, the first uh, uh, center that will be, because it's not uh, really completed, but uh, that will be the first center of carbon ion. Another project uh, may be in Australia uh, about, carbon, uh, about carbon ion. So I, I hope that uh, this contribute to create, to create a network. So because uh, another issue that I, I, I did not discuss is that uh, there are few cooperation among the centers, so I don't like to speak about uh, Heidelberg, but what is strange at the time that uh, now adopted Japanese protocol and uh, Heidelberg adopted own protocols, so it means that two centers in Europe do the protocol, very difficult to, to get uh, to, to, to put together the data. Uh, uh, including the different system, the different system to, to calculate the dose distribution, to calculate the RBE, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are a lot of complications, also real complications to, to cooperate. This is uh, there is a message in the chat, Nicolas, if you want to read it. Yes, um, by Reinhard Schulte. In my mind, the ideas of personalized uh, omics driven treatments and randomized trials have to be married. We need to assign patients to the different treatment options in an unbiased way, randomize, and then analyze the results to inform future trials based on omics. We need single room carbon helium ion facilities, big national hit facilities are only the start. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, if I take much. one more moment, sorry, uh, Nicholas. <laughs> question, I take, Jota, we're very... yeah. uh, this brings me to my other um, naive uh, uh, question about randomized uh, trials. Um, uh, if myself as a patient, uh, I know that there is a chance uh, using carbons or protons as compared to photons uh, that I, uh, I have a better chance not only uh, to cure uh, uh, my disease, but also to have less harm on the healthy tissues. Why I would like to be uh, the baseline uh, uh, measurement on uh, the photon side uh, and not go for the best uh, the option that exists. Uh, how 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 do you handle these randomized trials? Um, what is accepted, uh, will be accepted by insurance, by national system, is uh, uh, the, the, the only outcome, the only endpoint that uh, we can accept to demonstrate. And I'm not so sure that it will be possible with randomization because uh, there is also a problem of accessibility of the patient uh, to the carbon ion center. There are very few. And also to cooperate with the standard in addition to the, the patient decided that is convinced that already that carbon is better, move to carbon. So there are no to flip a coin to decide which type of therapy uh, to do. Um, I, I, this is an unsolved, uh, unsolved problem. So anyway, we have to demonstrate it is not easy in radiation therapy in general, in carbon ion too, in particle therapy too, that one treatment is superior to other one in the major endpoint. And major endpoint in, is uh, the survival of the patient. Other, all the other endpoint, toxicity, biochemical control, etc. I am an old radiation oncology. I remember the question of um, irradiation of rectal cancer by, by X-rays. So, 
no impact on survival. Okay, it's better for local control, et cetera, combined surgery, et cetera, et cetera. No fact. So means how many patients we are able to cure more than with X-ray. This is uh, if the delta is enough to justify the uh, additional cost, probably the situation changed. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Orecchia, for that very interesting lecture.